Because you're going, please, please let some of that data have made it in. When it comes to loading data into the Oracle database, there's a very important acronym. It's called QTFWBC. Now, you may not have heard of that, but it's a vital part of the uh, loading process. And it stands for queries that finish without bloody crashing, because it always starts like this. I need to load a lot of data into a table, and so I'm running insert into my table, select star from my whopping great fat huge table, so it's gonna take a while. The moment I set that running, the first thing I normally see is this. I'll grab myself a coffee, I'll maybe pay some bills, read a book, watch a bit of Netflix, all these things just to pass the time. But finally, after six hours and 12 minutes, my SQL Plus session comes back to me and phew, it's done. And then this happens. Just one row, maybe, we don't know, has absolutely killed me. And the first thing you're doing is just like, no! But funnily enough, even though we know the principles of ACID and transactions and all those great things in the Oracle database, I can promise you when you've run something for six hours and trying to reinsert and it fails, the first thing you'll do is this. Select count star because you're going, please, please let some of that data have made it in. But as we know, it ain't there. But we've had a very cool enhancement to the Oracle database going back as far as Oracle 12, which seems to be uh, very rare when I see customers nowadays. You know, they haven't sort of picked up on this very cool facility. It's called the validate conversion function. Here is my huge table or a sample of data from it. And you can see there is the errant row that's not ever going to be able to be converted to a date. But the validate conversion function lets me pass each of those rows through, attempt the conversion, and then get an indication as to whether the conversion attempt was going to be valid or not. Therefore, I can avoid that errant row and still have all the others loaded successfully. Sometimes the requirement we have is not to uh, eliminate that row, but to assign some sort of default. So the, the number of rows is still valid, but we've actually corrected the data or at least assigned some sort of placeholder for further analysis. For that, we've extended functions like the cast function. The cast function can now also drop to a default if we have a conversion error. You can see in this example, the salary is actually a string column, and unfortunately, one of the rows came in with a typical comma separator. That's not going to natively convert to a number, but I'm not eliminating that row. I'm simply replacing it with a minus one. I could probably hunt for those later. All of the typical functions you use to convert between data types have been extended to accept this conversion facility. So two number, for example, that works as well, but I can do two date, two timestamp, et cetera. They now have that ability to fall through to a default if you can't successfully do a conversion. So when you have to do a huge load of data into the Oracle database, and because of the volume, you have to pay a response time penalty, make sure you only pay that price once. Take advantage of validate conversion and the extensions to the cast function and the two conversion functions to make sure that you get all or at least the vast majority of the data loaded in and you can then go hunt for the errors later on. You can combine that, for example, also with say DML error logging to make sure that big loads are just a one-time operation.